everybody. It is lovely to be back. <laughs> and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We acknowledge that we are worshipping on land that has been cared for since time immemorial by our Aboriginal brothers and sisters, the Jagger and the Turrbal peoples in this area. 
we, respect, we pay our respects to their elders, both past and present and emerging. And we promise to continue working with them in covenant partnership. We are called to bring a new understanding of God, that God so loves the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are called to bring a new hope in God, that God gives us new life. We are the light of the world. We are called to follow the commandments of the law. The law of God is to love God and to love one another. Come, let us be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Come, let us love one another with the love of God. Let us pray. Holy God, join us together in our love for you and for one another as we worship and follow Jesus together. Amen. So if we're able, let us stand and sing our first song, Gather Us In. We come before God with our prayer of confession. Let us pray. God of glory, you sent Jesus among us as the light of the world to reveal your love for all people. We confess that our sin and our pride hide the brightness of your light. We turn away from those who are poor. We ignore cries for justice. We do not strive for peace. Forgive us, God. In your mercy, cleanse us of our sin and baptize us once again with your spirit so that as forgiven and renewed people, we may reflect the love and the life of Jesus Christ into the world. Amen. Our God is a God of grace, 
and love, mercy and love. Know that our sins have been forgiven. Thanks be to God. And as forgiven people, let us share the peace that, bring, that God brings us. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us share with God's peace with one another. For those who are young and young at heart, I'm going to wander over here. If you'd like to come, you're, able to, you're willing, welcome to come down. If you don't, that's okay too. You can stay where you are. It's up to you. But I'll, oh, hello. I'm going to have a seat over here. Hello, Lily. How are you? So... For those who go to school, school, you, you go to school, school's gone back, hasn't it? Is this the first week or is it second, second week? So, wow, it's time flies already, you're two weeks in already. Lily, you're not quite old enough to go to school yet, are you? You go to preschool? And they, yeah? Kindy, you go to kindy? Oh, that's awesome. You are next year going to school. Wow, you're growing up so fast, Lily. So a lot of new things start at the beginning of the year, don't they? As you said, you're going back to school, so that's a new school year, and you've got new teachers and, and new classes and, and, and new people to get to know in, church, in school as well. Also, if you, yeah. yeah. And then also there's people going back to, to high school and, and uni as well, and they've got brand new classes and subjects to do, so it's all different again, isn't it? Hello, you're going back to school too, aren't you? Yeah. How cool are you having fun at school? Sam. So, you know, sometimes it can be hard to start new things, but it's not always easy to start new things. But we remember that God is with us in all the things, all the new things that we start. Sometimes, as I said, it's, it's challenging to start new things, to, to try and meet new people, to, to get to know new people and teachers and, and to learn new skills as well that we're learning at school. So we've got to remember, though, that even if it's hard, that Jesus is with us. He promises that he will always be with us, helping us along the way. And if things are going really well as well, Jesus is with us in those things as well. And so we're going to pray a prayer for all of those who are starting school and kindy as well. And we're going to say a prayer. So let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's pray to God. So God of new things. Bless all those who are returning to school and to university. Bless old students and new students. Bless teachers and principals and nurses and coaches and gardeners and groundskeepers and cleaners and social workers. Bless the chaplains and the RI teachers. Bless the parents and families of all students. Bless the pattering of small feet in new classrooms. Bless the smell of new books and clean desks. Bless the summer sun and the faded down wall courts on warm concrete. Bless the eager to learn and the anxious of heart. Bless those who find reading difficult. Bless those who are quick to calculate. Bless those who, who are friendless and those who are unsure. May there be good lessons learned, forgiveness quickly asked and given, patience sustained, character nurtured, hope inspired and growth gained. Through your spirit of new life, encircle our schools and our universities with peace and hope and love. In the name of Christ, our friend, we pray. Amen. 
So we're going to sing a song. And this song is a song about trusting in God, that God will show us the way, will light the way for us. It's called My Lighthouse. Now, there's some actions that we might want to that we might want to do. Now, there's actions for the whole song, but I only remember the actions for the, for the chorus. So, when it says, my lighthouse, my light house. Oh, you'd have, you go that way. Okay, did something different? So, so, my lighthouse, my light house, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my light house, I'm getting confused now. <laughs> I will trust the promise you will carry me safe to shore and like like waves so if you want if anyone would like to do this feel free to to stand and do the actions as well we're going to stand anyway if those who can please stand and we'll sing my lighthouse and if you want to do the actions we can do those as well in my wrestling and in my doubts in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea
This morning's reading is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. A newspaper story that I first saw reported all the way back on the 10th of September 2007 in the Daily Kent Star reports by the Associated Press that a fast food cook was arrested for using too much salt. Reading from the story reported, Union City, Georgia, a McDonald's employee spent the night in jail and is facing criminal charges because of, because of a police officer's burger was too salty. So salty that it says it made him sick. Kendra Bull was arrested Friday, charged with misdemeanor reckless conduct and freed on $1,000 bail. Bull, 20, said she accidentally spilled salt on hamburger meat and told her supervisor and co-worker who tried to thump the salt off. On her break, she ate, the, ate a burger made with the salty meat. I didn't make me sick, Bull told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. But police, then police officer Wendell Adams got a burger made with the over-salted meat, and he returned a short time later and told the manager it made him sick. Bull admitted spilling salt on the meat, and Adams took her outside and questioned her. She said, if it was too salty, why did Adams not take one bite and throw it away? said Bull, who has worked at the restaurant for five months. She said she didn't know that a police officer got one of the salty burgers because she couldn't see the drive through window from her work area. Police sent samples of the burger to the state crime lab for tests. City Public Information Officer George Louth said Bull was charged because she served the burger without regards to the well-being of anyone who might consume it. Well, I remember wondering after reading this story so long ago that if Kendra Bull could have been charged also with assaulting a police officer. <laughs> so, you've probably picked up the loose connection there is between this news story and our gospel passage for today. Yes, it is salt that is the common theme, with Jesus teaching his disciples that they must be the salt of the earth and also the light of the world. A lesson that continues on after last week's passage in which Jesus shares with them the Beatitudes, teaching them about the subversive and also the beautiful way in which they are and also we are to be God's people, painting for them and for us too a vision of what the kingdom of God can and will be like, a vision that is very different, opposite even, to what the world is currently like. In Jesus' teaching today, he introduces two more images of how we are to be God's people. As the salt of the earth and as the light of the world. Of course, we all know salt, don't we? Salt is a remarkable substance. But once, but for one, salt is a preserving agent, allowing food to be kept far longer than it would normally allow able to be kept. 
On its own, though, salt doesn't taste very nice with a particularly strong and, and dare I say, salty flavour. Well, at least I think it doesn't taste particularly nice. And if we consume too much salt, then we can get sick, just as the police officer in our news story did. But when salt is used with other elements and in the right amounts, something amazing takes place. For the taste of what the salt has been added to is enhanced, bringing out the best flavour. Of course, this is how it is for us today. But for people in ancient times and in ancient cultures, salt had an even deeper meaning than just as a preserver and a flavour enhancer. For salt was used in meals as a way to bring people together, forming a bond between those sharing in the meal, making the meal proper. And of course, for the Jewish practice of sacrifice, grain and other offerings to God were required to be seasoned with salt, and so I wonder if this is a way of bringing the Jewish people closer together with God, strengthening the relationship between God and with God's people. And if this is the case, I then also wonder that when Jesus calls his followers the salt of the earth, it is an indication that, that we as his followers are to act in a way to strengthen the relationship between God and the world. The second image that Jesus introduces is that his followers are to be the light of the world. Now, light on its own doesn't accomplish much. Instead, light is really only effective when it illuminates what is present in a dark space, allowing one to navigate the landscape to avoid obstacles and, and to see other people around and also to discern the way forward. And so for Jesus' followers, and again for us as well, we are commanded to let our light shine, remembering that the source of our light is Jesus, who is the light of the world, but to illuminate the spaces and the places that we are in so that all may see and know the way forward. Salt and light. We are to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. This, of course, is not just an individual calling. It is a communal calling as well. And Jesus addresses his followers, as he, and he makes this clear. As a community of followers, we are to be the salt of the earth, helping and strengthening the relationship between God and everyone. And we are to be the light of the world, helping people to see the way to Jesus. But there's more to this passage. For Jesus then begins speaking about the law, that is the law of Moses. Jesus tells them, and us too, that he has not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. What took place in Israel's history is not to be ignored or discarded, but to be recognised as important and as needed. Professor Melanie Howard writes in her commentary on this passage that as Jesus upholds the importance of the law, he simultaneously upholds the historical connection between his own time and Moses's. And so thus the times connect God sorry, and thus connecting God following communities all through the centuries of time between Moses, who received the law all those centuries before, and then the time of Jesus and his first followers. Connecting those times also to the spreading and growing communities of the early church. And then throughout the centuries afterwards where communities of followers were to share the good news, being salt and light in the spaces and the places where they were, all the way through to today, where we are called to do the same, all together, enfolded in one covenant relationship with God. So today we have an opportunity to renew our covenant with God, both individually and as a community. In the words of the covenant renewal, we will be reminded of our connection with all the followers of God who have come before and all those who will come after, and we'll be challenged to sacrifice our wants and our desires, sacrifice our very selves to, con to continue following God. We can, if we wish, make this commitment or recommitment to following God and promise to serve God through service to those who we encounter extending God's grace and love to everyone through acts and words of kindness and love 
and mercy and justice and forgiveness and working together as one people to be the salt of the earth and the light on the world. The prayer that we will pray is a powerful prayer and it is a powerful promise that we're making. But we are, sure, we are assured in making it that God has already promised to love us, to care for us, to forgive us when we fail and to sustain us as God's salt and light, as God's people. Amen. So if you are willing, let us renew our covenant with God. In the old covenant, God chose Israel as God's people and gave them the gift of the law. In the new covenant, God made the gift of God's son, Jesus Christ, who fulfills the law for us. We stand within the new covenant and we bear the name of Christ. God promises us new life in Christ. We receive this promise and pledge to not live for ourselves but for God. This covenant is renewed each time we meet at the table of the Lord. Today we meet as generations before us have met to renew that which bound them and, bound them and now binds us to God. And so I welcome all those who would like to renew this covenant to please stand. Beloved in Christ, let us again claim this covenant for ourselves and take the yoke of Christ upon us. To take this yoke upon us means that we are content that he appoint us our place and work and that he himself be our reward. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honour, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given us in Christ who strengthens us. Therefore let us make this covenant with God our own, trusting in the eternal promises and relying on divine grace. Let us pray. Lord God, in baptism you brought us into union with Christ who fulfills your gracious covenant. And in bread and wine we receive the fruit of his obedience. So, with joy, we take upon ourselves the yoke of obedience and commit ourselves to seek and do your perfect will. Let us take a moment of silence. I am no longer my own, but yours. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours, to the glory and praise of your name. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Please be seated. And so, freely we have received, so let us freely give our offering for the Lord.
Holy God, we thank you for all the things that you have done for us, all the things that you are doing for us, for your presence and for your gift of, of your son, Jesus, Lord. That through him, you taught us how to, how to be and how to live, how to be the salt of the earth, how to be the light of the world. And so, Lord God, we give you these gifts in response to your gift of love to us. We give you these gifts of money and resources, but we also give you our lives as we've just done in our covenant prayer. And so, Lord God, we pray that you use these gifts and you continue using us in your service to love the world as you love the world. Thank you, God. We pray, in all, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Please be seated. Jeff, would you like to bring us our notices for today? Mary here uh, sent her apologies uh, for not being able to be with us today. Uh, as Minister in Association, she particularly wished to be here, uh, but uh, uh, was unable to do so. And she sends her blessings for us as we renew our covenant around the Lord's table today. This week, um, Ladies' Fellowship, uh, meeting on Tuesday at 9.30 here at the church. Uh, don't forget the summer lunch uh, next Sunday, uh, 12 noon, at uh, Cafe Mies over at Graceful, for those who would like to, uh, to join in that. Uh, there's still an opportunity to pop your name on the list out on the veranda this morning. Uh, don't forget the Lenten study uh, that uh, is coming up. Uh, Lent commences a uh, week commencing the 26th of February. Um, and uh, there's an opportunity to, uh, to join in a small group uh, for the Lenten study this year. And I noticed that quite a few people have responded uh, already. Uh, the Wednesday group, uh, daytime group, uh, is, looks like there are a number of people who have put their names down for that. Uh, so you might like to consider if you'd like to be part of a daytime uh, small group. Uh, there's also a number of people put their name down for Thursday evening. And uh, on Sunday evening, uh, we're looking at having uh, a group uh, for young adults. So whether high school or university or that sort of age group, uh, following our evening five o'clock service on Sunday evenings. So the Lenten study is uh, called Journey with Jesus and it will follow the, le the uh, lectionary readings uh, for the period of Lent and it's uh, over a five week period. So if you'd like to think about that, uh, certainly pop your name down on the sheet out there as well. Uh, now, you would have read, and I mentioned last Sunday in Centenary Life uh, also, uh, that uh, this month, month of February, uh, we have a focus on stewardship. Uh, so we'll be focusing on our, uh, uh, our stewardship of the way in which we give uh, financially to the life and mission of the church here, and also the way in which we uh, contribute and participate in various ways uh, in the life of the church. So we're giving you opportunity throughout the month of February to reflect on these things. Uh, and uh, today, uh, Russell is going to speak to us about uh, the ways in which we might consider our financial giving to, to the church. And uh, next Sunday, I'm going to have a look at uh, and remind us about those uh, goals and strategies uh, that are part of our mission plan for the next five years and look at the ways in which you can contribute and participate uh, in, in, in the way in which you might help to help us to achieve those goals. Thanks, Russell. Good morning, everybody. Um, I was somewhat distressed when Jeff um, put in centenary life that um, we were having stewardship, uh, this period of stewardship, because I thought, well, nobody's going to come and listen to me because they're going to be scared off. And, um, but it's a good roll-up today, and um, I don't know whether we should now shut the doors to keep everybody in, but um, we, we'll see how we go. <clears throat> anyway, I am here today to talk to you about stewardship and specifically how we respond to God's love and grace in a financial sense. Next Sunday, we will be thinking about our non-financial 
response in the context of the use of our time, gifts and hard learnt skills. The last time I did this was about this time back in 2020. I think it was actually about the 15th of February 2020. <clears throat> it was just before the reach and impact of COVID was dawning on us all. For the ensuing three years, we were as a congregation significantly affected in our worship numbers. Various plans for renewal were set aside in the hurly burly, burly of COVID compliance. Numbers are slowly building again as we get on with 2023. <clears throat> it is now nearly 15 years since the then Church Council championed the introduction of what is known as a planned giving program to support the ministry and mission of the Church here in Centenary. At that time, some 60 givers, and I use the word givers, meaning couples and individuals, but sort of giving units, if you like, some 60 givers in the congregation took up the challenge and signed up for the use of envelopes or regular direct debiting from bank accounts. It was a great result. Some 30 of those givers Couples and singles are still with us today. Others have moved away from the suburbs and worship elsewhere, and others have left for personal reasons, and sadly, some have passed away. Of the stayers, many have experienced changed financial circumstances due to retirement and changes in their personal situations. Of course, many other people have joined us in this time and now contribute to our ministry and mission as well. I'm not recovering from COVID, just the flu, so it's all right. Our most recent financial statements for the 18 months to the 30th of June 2022, and we, we changed our financial year last year to, to a June, uh, a July to June year end, that's why we had 18 months, so it showed that we had, on an annualised basis, a shortfall of $10,000. Our offerings were $128,000. And for the 2023 year, we have budgeted for $130,000 and a similar shortfall. So far this year, our offerings are around $6,500 short of those targets. And if this continues into the new year, our deficiency will be around $15,000. There will be more details in next week's centenary life. Our budget is what I call a bare bones budget. It just covers our operating costs. This, of course, cannot go on forever. At, the same, at this rate, our reserves will be exhausted in three to four years. And it is why growth and revitalization of the life of the congregation is so needed for our mission to go on and prosper. It is a hard act standing here today talking about this in the face of the clamour in the press about cost of living pressures, rising interest rates, school costs, grocery prices, petrol prices, gas prices, take away food, etc. But I do need to bring it to everybody's attention. Today I'm inviting us to all consider our giving to the ministry and mission of our church. In so doing, I'm of course not saying that everyone will be in a position to revise their offerings. One can only do what one can and should not feel lesser because of that. In his second letter to the Corinthians, the Apostle Paul had a lot to say about giving, citing the church in Macedonia. The Corinthian, Corinth, if you like, is at the bottom of Greece and Macedonia is away up in the top in the far north. The actions he saw there were that despite the people's poor financial state, they gave generously, voluntarily, and their giving was grounded in their belief in Jesus Christ. Paul also enunciated several principles to guide us in relation to giving. 
Our giving is an indicator of the genuineness of our love and should be proportional and reflective of what we have, he said. We should give gladly and willingly, knowing that generosity changes us for the better. Jesus also spoke about money and giving our relationship with it, the parable of the talents and the story of the widow's might prominent among them. So today I'm inviting us all to consider our giving to the ministry and mission of our church. Our objectives and plans are set out in the mission plan that has been before you for some weeks now and which will be spoken about again next week in the context of how everyone can participate in its outcomes. So how do we go about this challenge? If you are currently using envelopes or are direct debiting, just revise the amount of your offering. The system will look after itself. If you'd like to take up envelopes, these are in a box at the back of the church and our bank account details are in centenary life. Many find this is an intensely personal decision, so I can assure you of privacy. I am the only one who is aware of the owner of numbered envelopes and direct debit offerings, apart from the auditor who sees uh, our bank statements. You might like to use the unnumbered envelopes. These are known to nobody. The challenge I have before you is that we have to claw back a 12-month deficiency of some $15,000. This of of itself is not a, a huge number. To achieve this, and based on our current numbers, We need to increase average, and I stress the word average, weekly offerings by some $4 per person over the next 18 months or so. Regular weekly giving and having more seats filled on Sundays would also greatly assist in reaching this target. $4 goes a long way on an annual basis. It represents about half of one of our quarterly rates bills. And on an individual basis, It is just over half the cost of my coffee outing at Rosemont twice a month. We might have to have those once a month, Peter. I would like to finish with the words of others who prepared a stewardship paper some years ago and which has informed some of my words here today. The stewardship of our money is first and foremost a matter of the heart. It's not about budgets and paying bills and maintaining our buildings, important as those things may be. Stewardship is about our relationship with God and our response in faith to our experience of the generosity of God. Stewardship begins with each one of us on a personal, individual level. We have to get our own attitudes and responses right in the first instance. Then we will be ready and eager to support the ministry and mission of the church with our money. Let us come together in prayer for ourselves, our loved ones, our community, and our world. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Lord, for the privilege of gathering together around your table and remember those who do so in places where it is not acceptable to gather and share a meal. Fill them and protect them, we pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we come before you humbly asking for your blessing to flow over us this morning. We pray for your world at this time, a world that sees a mixture of love and hatred, peace and war, a world divided by different religions. We pray for the end of wars and acts of terrorism throughout the world. We pray that the hatred that fills the hearts of so many will be replaced with love and that the energy used to plan and carry out such acts of violence 
be channelled into making our world a peaceful place for all. We pray for the homeless and those separated from their families here in Australia and throughout the world, for those who seek to find new life here in Australia and other parts of the world, may they find peace and rest. We pray for our Aboriginal people and their struggles. We give thanks for the elders of the different communities who try to make a difference. May they see the fruits of their labours, we pray. As we gather around your table, Lord, we pray that your spirit will fill us all and open us to your love and guidance as your people here in Centenary. We pray that we may be the face of your love to everyone we know and whom we meet have yet to meet. We pray for our elders and church council, for all they do to keep this church functioning and for supporting us. May they be sensitive to your spirit in all that they, their considerations and decisions. We pray, pray a blessing on our pastoral care team as they faithfully meet and uphold us all in prayer. Bless Craig and Mary as they minister to us in your name. Guide them each day and refresh them. We uphold all those worldwide who minister in your name and pray that they will be filled with your spirit and guidance each day. We pray for our schools, for your refreshing on principals, deputies, teachers and auxiliary staff, for strength, wisdom and patience for all that they will encounter each day. We pray for your sustaining and protecting for special ed teachers and teachers aides in all that they are required to do. For your blessing on the children who face so many difficulties in their lives, both physical and mental. We give thanks for those who care for people with disabilities, helping them to get through each day. And we pray you will, they will know your strengthening. We pray for comfort and ongoing support and a place of respite for parents of children with disabilities and the other children in these families where so much time is given to the one with special needs. Give them a peace and acceptance, we pray. We bring before you school chaplains, Sunday school teachers and youth workers. May they walk with you each day as they lead our young people closer to you with their words and actions. At this time of the new school year, we pray for your spirit to fill them all. We bring before you all who are sick, those we know and have been praying for, and those we have not, who have not shared with us. Let us know, Lord, you know them, and we ask your healing hand to be upon them. We pray for the families who have recently lost loved ones. We ask that you will send your spirit to comfort them and that, they, and that we may be your servants here to offer a listening ear and a strong arm to enfold them. We ask for jobs for the jobless, homes for the homeless and education for the children who face life in homes where there is not always enough food, clothing or peaceful relationships so that they may concentrate on their learning. We ask your blessing on all we know who are travelling at this time. May their joy, may they enjoy the time of visiting many different parts of your world and bring them home to us in health and safety. We pray for all those who attend the sick and injured, the police, ambulance and fire personnel. For doctors and nurses who will be called upon to mend the sick and broken bodies. And we pray for our families and ask your blessing to flow over every one of them. And we pray for our church family and give you thanks for the love and support we receive from them in your name. We ask all these things and many more in your, that are in our hearts as we gather today. In your name. Amen. So we are gathered around the table. Let us stand and sing as we prepare to receive communion. As we sing the song communion. I invite the elders to come forward.
Please be seated. We gather in this building, our church, and we have this special meal because long ago Jesus had this special meal with his disciples and his friends. He took some bread, gave thanks to God, then he broke it and said, and shared it with his friends, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body which will be broken for you. And then he took the cup of wine and he said, drink from this, all of you. This cup is the sign of a new relationship between God and humanity. This wine is like my blood that will be poured out. Everything that separates you from God will be washed away. Through me, all people can be reconnected with God. Repeat this simple meal of bread and wine and remember all God has done for you through my life on earth. Let us pray. Jesus, host of this special meal, be with us now once again and let your Holy Spirit help us to experience the wonder of your love. You came to help us understand God's directions. You healed people with God's power. But we were jealous of that power and did not want to listen to you. Jesus, you were crucified, your body broken and your blood poured out. But your death was not the end. 
God raised you to life that enables you to be with us, even though we can no longer see you as a human here. With the church down through the ages, we remember and say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Holy Spirit of God, let this bread and wine remind us of Jesus' love and join us together as his people as we pray his prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The body of Jesus broken for us. The blood of Jesus given for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. And so we're going to be doing things a little bit differently today. There will be two serving points down here at the front of the church. Feel free to come whenever you are ready. Come down and receive the, the elements of bread and, and grape juice. And return to your seats with those elements and consume them when you are ready. There is no order to who comes, just come when you are ready. So come for all is prepared.
Let us pray. Loving God, in this meal shared together, you've helped us experience your love today. Help us to share your love with everyone we meet this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let us stand once again and sing, sent forth by God's blessing. Thank you, brother. Thank you. go now sure-footed in faith with eyes wide open and waiting for God's glory to surprise you in unexpected ways and the blessing of God Father Son and Spirit mystery sign and hope be with you and those whose lives you touch now and always amen and let us turn to one another as we share the Mispa benediction may the Lord watch between thee and thee whilst we're absent one from the other amen <laughs>